Hey guys, so soon I will transform this guitar into a fretless and I thought why not do a quick review before I ruin it. And disclaimer, this is my private guitar, I'm not paid for this and who would sponsor me? So, Alright, so it's a Harley Benton DC Junior Fat. Uh, I will skip the obvious specs, basically it's an inauthentic version of a Les Paul Junior double cut. Uh, for a low price. But there are some specs they don't tell you on the website, which are that it weights around 2.8 kilograms or 6.17 pounds. The neck thickness on the first fret is 21.6 millimeters and 24.7 millimeters on the 12th. Then the frets are quite large for being called medium jumbo, but that's a good thing. And then as a cool feature it came with both white and black plastic parts, so you can decide what kind of look you want to go for. However, the color of this guitar is discontinued and the ones they are selling now, they don't have the white plastic parts. Also, the tuning stability is good thanks to the Wilkinson Deluxe Tuners. So let's get to the problems I found with the guitar. Problem number one is that the Roswell P90D stack pickup is noisy. When the push-pull pot is down, it's in high power mode and then it hums quite a bit. And when you pull the tone knob, it's kind of like a split humbucker sound, then it's hum cancelling. which is a bit weird, usually it's the other way around, that only the split coil mode has hum. And I think it's simply wired wrong. And it might not even be the pickups fault. Maybe there's a grounding issue somewhere. It's a stacked P90, so it should be quiet with the coils in series and parallel. Then problem number two is that the bridge is too tall and you can't set a low action. On the high E side, I lowered the bridge post all the way, which gives the high E string an action of 1.5 millimeters over the 20 second fret, which could be called a medium action. And if you want to set the action lower than that, the easiest way to fix this is to get a new bridge. In my case, I got myself a Wilkinson wraparound bridge. I can't measure the stock bridge right now, but as you can see, it's clearly much lower than the stock bridge. Then problem number three, the paint is not light fast. You can see how the blue is getting pale on one side because that's where the light came from when it was placed in the guitar stand. But it was never in direct sunlight and I only had the guitar for a bit more than a year. So it's surprising that it would get pale so quickly. Usually guitars have a UV protection in the clear coat, but this one doesn't apparently. However, as this color is not sold anymore, I'm sure the new versions don't have that issue. Also, I found some blue paint on the side of a fret and there's this uneven area on the side of the fretboard. Fortunately, it's on the low E side of the neck. It's not noticeable while playing and there's no issue with the frets. Then problem number four is that the frets need polishing. For example, when you do a bending, the frets feel a bit rough. Just listen to how scratchy they are. But this will go away by itself by playing the guitar a lot or of course you can polish the frets with a Dremel, then they will get really shiny. Okay, so how good are these guitars really? So even though I mentioned some problems, overall it's lots of fun to play. The sound is very snappy. I think the pickup sounds very good. It's a bit different than a real P90, but uh, that could be good or bad. However, however, when compared directly to, for example, an Epiphone Wilshire, which costs twice as much, then you realize the Epiphone feels like a high quality instrument, while the Harley Benton is more like a budget-friendly but still nice guitar. Uh, that being said, the Epiphone also has some issues. For example, I can't set the bridge pickup as high as I wanted, but I will fix that in the near future. All right, so that's it for today. Please comment, like and subscribe and stay tuned for the upcoming video where I transform this one into a fretless with a steel plate as a fretboard.